This is the Before You Read lecture for the Book of Ruth. Our reading for this week is, if I recall correctly, the shortest thus far in our class reading the Bible together. We will be reading and discussing the small Book of Ruth, just four chapters in length. Though short, it is not insignificant, and I am sure that it will give us a lot to think about and reflect on together and independently. In her introduction to Ruth in the Harper Collins Study Bible, Adele Berlin describes Ruth as, quote, one of the most beautiful pieces of literature in the Bible. Her assessment highlights the narrative, even folkloric, quality of Ruth. It reads like a modern-day short story. Characters are introduced with very little backstory. We learn most about the characters not through their internal thinking or from the insights of an omniscient narrator, but through their actions. The story moves quickly from the initial setting to a conflict and a climax and finally resolution. The story itself is easy to follow and memorable in its core. Berlin's assessment also invites us to think about uh, to think of Ruth as a piece of literature and not simply a piece of naked history or or a newspaper reporting. We can see this, for example, with the names of the characters. All of the characters in the book are given symbolic names, which somehow reflect their role or uh, the type of person that they are. Ruth, for example, likely derives from the word for friend or companion. Not surprisingly, then, she appears in the, na in, in the narrative as a faithful and tireless friend and companion to Naomi even in the most troubling times. Or consider Naomi. Her name means pleasant. But after some unfortunate events in the narrative, she demands that people begin to refer to her as Mara, which means bitter. Naomi, her name means sweet and then is bitter after she experiences some bitter events. The names of Naomi's two sons, Malon and Chilion, are not without symbolic meaning either. The first is related to the word for sickness and the other to the word spent, which both foreshadow the unfortunate events that will meet them in the narrative. This simple practice of giving character names that have deeper or symbolic meaning once again calls more attention to the role of characterization in the narrative. The characters uh, and their actions and their words demonstrate their true identity, which is symbolized or hinted at by the meaning of their name. Briefly, it is worth noting where Ruth falls in the biblical canon. Both the Christian canon and the Jewish canon, you may not know, but these two canons have some differences in the ways the books are laid out. In the Christian canon, which follows the Greek and Latin translations of the Hebrew Bible, Ruth stands in between Judges and 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel, you may recall, marks the advent of the monarchy in Israel. Ruth's placement in the Christian canon, then, is chronological. It follows the book of Judges, it follows the time of the Judges, and it precedes the time of Israel's kings. The opening verse of the narrative aligns with this chronological placement. It reads, uh, it places the story, quote, in the days when the judges ruled, Ruth 1.1. As you will see, the whole story offers a significant juxtaposition to how the book of Judges depicts what life was like under the judges. In the Jewish canon, the book of Ruth is placed near the end of the collection of sacred writings. It is grouped along with other writings known as the Five Scrolls. These five scrolls are the Song of Solomon, Ecclesiastes, Lamentations, Esther, and Ruth. Each of these writings came to be associated with a Jewish festival. Ruth was associated with the Festival of Weeks, also known as the Festival of Pentecost. Rather than seeing Ruth as a transitional or even forward-looking uh, book to the monarchy, some Jewish tradition understands Ruth more retrospectively, looking backwards. They see the major themes, and especially the behavior of Ruth, 
as exemplary of the law of Moses given hundreds of years later. It's as if the book of Book of Ruth provides in narrative form what the Ten Commandments or the larger law corpus provide in their legal way. Regardless of the different placements, Ruth plays an important role in both the Christian and Jewish canons. As with so many of the writings in the Old Testament, it is difficult to know with any certainty when Ruth was wit written. But based on clues from the text, we can narrow it down some. The most important detail in Ruth related to its date is the mention of King David in chapter 4. Since the author of Ruth assumes the audience is familiar with David and his significant for the nation of Israel, we can assume that Ruth was written after the reign of David, sometime after 950 BCE, in other words. Narrowing the date of composition down any further depends on how one interprets certain details and the major themes of Ruth. Some interpreters call attention to the prominent place of Judah and Bethlehem and the rise of King David in Ruth, and they suggest that Ruth was written as a literary product of the United Kingdom, or perhaps it was written as a way of glorifying the southern kingdom after the two kingdoms were divided between north and south. So it, it sort of is almost literary propaganda building up the southern kingdom, the kingdom of Judah. This would range, uh, the date of composition then would range somewhere between 950 and 700 BCE. Other interpreters, however, note that there are certain linguistic features of the text which suggest it was written at a later date, at a later period in history, most likely sometime after the exile. So then they too would call attention to what Ruth says about David and, and maybe about Judah, but they would see Ruth not so much as a prologue to setting up that dynasty, but as a theological response to the growing concern about uh, the, the growing concern that exile brought about, about whether or not that Davidic din dynasty would survive. As with other writings in the Bible, attention to the possible date of composition just gives us a few additional perspectives or considerations to take into our reading. We don't need a hard and fast decision to read Ruth. But the major options do offer us different ways of thinking about and interpreting Ruth and trying to understand why Ruth is, is written in the way that it is. Interpreters have noted a handful of important themes that run throughout Ruth. Jewish tradition has identified hesed as the main or primary theme of Ruth. Ruth. Hesed is a Hebrew word which uh, has a, a, a variety of connotations and even translations into English. But at a basic level, it means loyalty or faithfulness that arises from a commitment. Chesed is often used to describe God's relationship to humanity, highlighting God's sturdy and long-suffering commitment to the people of Israel despite their tendency to wander astray or even outright rebel. It can also describe the ideal relationships between humans. As you will see in Ruth, many characters demonstrate chesed, committed loyalty to one another. Pay particular attention to the chesed of Naomi, Ruth, and Boaz, among the other characters. In addition, family and child rearing are important elements in the story, which has often caused some interpreters to identify the idea of family continuity as a major theme in Ruth. In ancient Israel and most of the ancient world, children, and especially male children, carried on the family name and legacy. Having children was a vital part, if not a duty, in these ancient cultures. The events of Ruth threaten the continuity of certain family lines. As I mentioned earlier, Ruth's family line eventually includes that of Israel's ideal king. Ruth then underscores the significance and sacrifices made 
to continue the family that eventually gave rise to King David. A key aspect in this family continuation plan is what is known as leveret marriage. We find legislation for it elsewhere in the Hebrew Bible, but here is the basic idea. If a man died before fathering a a male child with his wife, that man's closest relative, his brother or maybe his uncle, uh, was obligated to marry his widow and have children with her so as to further the name of the dead man, to continue the dead man's family legacy. You may remember the story of Judah and Tamar from the book of Genesis and the extreme lengths that Tamar goes to preserve her family line through this very same practice. Interpreters then have noticed some interesting similarities between Ruth and Tamar in this regard. Finally, there are themes of emptiness and fullness that appear in several places throughout the narrative. Sometimes the emptiness or the fullness is about the natural world, about agriculture. There's famine and then there seems to be abundance. Other times there's emptiness and fullness in human relationships, loss of life or the advent of new life. Often the emptiness or fullness of the agricultural world mirrors in one way or another the character's experience of emptiness and fullness in the story. So be on the lookout for that. I've already mentioned a couple of reading strategies when I was discussing the themes of Ruth. So the the first thing to reiterate is to pay attention to chesed or loyalty in the book of Ruth. Where do you see fierce loyalty on display? What does fierce loyalty look like or require in the book of Ruth? And how do the characters model Hesed for later readers? And beyond individual acts of Hesed, I invite you to consider this question. What would a community of Hesed look like? What if a religious community collectively practiced the sort of fierce loyalty espoused by characters in Ruth? What would that look like? Second, Pay attention, uh, again, to the themes of emptiness and fullness. How do the events in the natural world relate to the experiences of characters in Ruth? How do the themes relate to the concept of blessing or personal welfare? And related to this, what is the role of God as it relates to emptiness and fullness, and to the narrative of Ruth more generally? Ruth is a rich book. And it will give us a lot to consider. And hopefully it provides a few examples of how we can be a people who practice fierce loyalty towards others in our community and beyond. Happy reading, friends.